All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the webinar for the 2022-23 school year. Please note that this webinar is being recorded. We're joined by three interpreters this evening. We have an Arabic interpreter, Zaina Chahade, a Korean interpreter, Aaron Pack, and a Spanish interpreter, Marcela Castro. We also have our American Sign Language interpreter, James Smith. Let's take a moment to learn how the interpretation rooms will work. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Marisela Castro, soy su intérprete inglés español. Eh, cuando usted ha activado el botón de interpretación, el botón de interpretación, si ustedes quieren escuchar esta junta en español, simplemente aprieten donde dice español, Spanish. Gracias. مساء الخير بجميع المنضمين لهذا المساء في الندوة عبر الويب للتقويم العام الدراسي 2022-2023 يرجى الملاحظة أنه يتم تسجيل هذه الندوة عبر الانترنت وينضم إلينا هذا المساء ثلاثة مترجمين عن لغات ثلاثة العربية الإسبانية والكورية كما ويرجى العلم بأن هناك بعض ال في عمل غرف الترجمة يرجى النقر على زر إظهار الترجمة بأسفل الشاشة واختيار اللغة ذات النوس وشكرا And I am James Smith I will be interpreting also You can see me on screen the entire time So you can just watch the screen and you'll see me and Michelle will, will be uh, on the same screen together. Thank you. All right, we also have live captioning available. If you're interested, please click on the show subtitles bottom at the bot button at the bottom of your screen. We're also joined by members of the FCPS leadership team tonight. Lisa Williams, Chief Equity Officer, Marty Smith, Chief Operating Officer, Sloan Presidio, Chief Academic Officer, and John Foster, Division Counsel, as panelists. I also understand that some of our Fairfax County School Board members are in attendance tonight. I would like to recognize Board Chair and Sully District Representative, Stella Pekarski, Vice Chair and Member at Large, Rachna Sizemore Heiser, Member at Large, Karen Keyes Gamara, Drainsville District Representative, Elaine Dolan. Mason District Representative, Ricardi Anderson. And the Springfield District Representative, Laura Jane Cohen. Thank you for joining us. I will now turn it over to Lisa Williams, Chief Equity Officer. Thanks, Michelle. Good afternoon, good evening, rather. FCPS is developing its 2022 2023 school calendar. We are committed to maintaining a transparent process as we work to build a calendar that is both inclusive and equitable. This year, the calendar development process will be guided by a framework that clearly outlines four factors that FP FCPS has to consider when creating the school calendar. We need to ensure that this, this bullet no, item number one, uh, state and federal law requires that we have a secular reason to establish a holiday. What this means is that in establishing a holiday, 
FCPS has to consider issues related to operational impact, such as staff absences and students absences when making decisions about calendaring. Next slide, please. Additionally, there are the superintendent's priorities. We need to focus on the division's ability to deliver high quality instruction to students to ensure that all are successful. Additionally, we need to ensure that students are adequately, the schools are adequately staffed throughout the school year and that teachers have opportunities to both extend and deepen their learning. Professional development is critically important. Next slide, please. Further, it's important that we establish a calendar feedback committee with broad representation. A calendar survey was emailed to all parents, staff, and middle and high school students. The survey closes November 10th. It's important that we ensure that we provide opportunities for community input, such as events like this evening. Next slide, please. Lastly, it's important that our school board priorities are reflected as well. Each board member has shared what they believe is important, are important considerations for the school calendar and FCPS leadership. The school board has final approval on the school calendar. And with that, I will now turn it back over to Michelle to continue this important discussion. Michelle. Thank you. We're now going to transition to live polling. So you're going to be asked seven questions. Each question will pop up on your screen one at a time, and I'll read them aloud for those joining us by phone. The interpreters will also be translating for those in other rooms. We'll give you a few moments to respond to each question, and then the results will be shared and briefly discussed. So we're gonna start with um, question one, which is the beginning of the school year is one of the major factors that limits when FCPS can end the school year. What is your preference on pairing the beginning and the end of the year? So option A, begin two weeks before Labor Day and end the first or second week of June. Begin one week before Labor Day and end the second or third week of June. No preference or other. And I can see the results are coming in. I'll give you just another minute to submit your answer. We have about 82% of the results are in. So we'll give it just another minute for those who are tuning in and want to submit an answer. All right, last chance to submit an answer before we display the results. All right, if we could end question one and display our results. So 
So it looks like about 41% of you want option two, which is to begin a week before Labor Day. 36% uh, voted for beginning two weeks before Labor Day. And then 22% had either no preference or other. All right, we're gonna move on to question number two. All right, question two. The winter and spring breaks are also major drivers for when FCPS can end the school year. Historically in FCPS, a long winter break has been two weeks and a long spring break has been one week. What is your preference on the length of these breaks? Option one, long winter and spring breaks requiring a later end of the school year. Option two, shorter winter and spring breaks allowing an earlier end to the school year. Option three, a shorter winter break only allowing a slightly earlier end to the school year. Option four, a shorter spring break only, allowing a slightly earlier end to the school year, or no preference. Take just a minute to submit your responses. We have 84% of participants have responded so far. Take just another second to submit your responses. All right, it looks like 47% of you chose option one, which is long winter and spring breaks requiring a later end to the school year. And then you can see the rest of the results are pretty varied. All right, we'll move on to number three. So number three is have you or your child, if you're a parent or guardian, taken any religious or cultural observance days since July, 2021? Yes, no, or you prefer not to respond at this time. All right, it looks like the majority of people have responded, 88% of you responded, and the majority chose no, that no religious or cultural observance days have been taken um, since July, 2021. All right, question number four. Do you or your child, if you're the parent or guardian, plan to take any days off for upcoming religious or cultural observance days? Yes, no, or you prefer not to respond?
Take another second to get your responses in. All right, of those who responded, 61% said no, they do not plan to take any days upcoming for religious or cultural observances. And 33% yes, said yes, they do plan to. All right, question number five. How important is it to you that student holidays align with neighboring counties? Extremely important, somewhat important, somewhat unimportant, extremely unimportant. All right, you can see the results on the screen in just a second. Mm -hmm. All right, so as you can see from those results, about 37% said ex extremely unimportant, 27 extremely important, and then the two in the middle are equally distributed. All right, question number six. During the school year, the division must provide all teachers and schools with planning time and professional development. What is your preference for how FCPS schedules time for teacher workdays, school planning, and staff development? Option one, five days during the school year, each with a three hour early release. Option two, five days during the school year, each with a two hour early release. Option three, two full days, which we would be designated as student holidays, or option four, no preference. All right, it looks like most responses are in. And you can see that 60% of you prefer two full days, which would be designated as student holidays. So we'll move on to question seven. If FCPS were to add days off to the calendar, which option would you like for FCPS to choose? Option A, New days off get added to the calendar and the school year gets extended by the same number of days. Or option B, new days off get added to the calendar and the school year does not get extended. Rather, the same number of added days off get swapped with days FCPS has had off in the past. It looks like the last responses are coming in. All 
right? And it looks like 58% of you prefer option B, which was that new days off get added to the calendar and the school year does not get extended. Rather, the same number of added days get swapped with days FCPS has had off in the past. So at this time, if you're still seeing the pop-up window on your screen, you can X out. And I'm gonna turn it over to Marty Smith to talk about next steps. Good evening, everyone. Well, first, I'd like to thank you on behalf of my colleagues for uh, attending our webinar this evening. Uh, the feedback that you provided will be invaluable for us and for our calendar feedback committee uh, as they provide uh, input to this entire process. I do wanna talk about some of the next steps uh, that you will see on the screen before you. Uh, today, this afternoon, we sent invitations out to our calendar committee stakeholders and uh, we'll be expecting those uh, invitations to be returned by the end of this week. Uh, for more information about everything that's happening with our calendar process, we urge you to go to www.fcps.edu and type calendar in the search, and that will take you to our landing page that will explain the process and highlight the stakeholder groups that are going to be represented on our calendar feedback committee. You'll note that on November 17th and on December 1st, we will hold meetings with the calendar committee where they will uh, prioritize their uh, individual stakeholder perspectives. Uh, they'll also uh, take and review uh, feedback such as yours tonight, as well as feedback from our calendar survey with our parent, uh, student and staff stakeholders and uh, review all of that information uh, and provide some uh, clear options for Fairfax County staff to review as we develop the calendar uh, to take before the board. Uh, you'll see then on December 13th, uh, that week, we will uh, be reviewing uh, different drafts of the calendar. Our leadership team, our associations, and our principals will review a variety of drafts. Uh, and then we will uh, take some time to work on those drafts to ensure that they are uh, really what the community and our stakeholders are looking for. Uh, we will then in January uh, discuss those drafts at a school board work session. So we certainly do uh, encourage uh, you all to uh, tune into the school board work session on January 11th as we uh, discuss those drafts. On the 13th, those calendar drafts will be presented to our school board as new business, and there'll be an opportunity for public comment. And then on January 27th, uh, our school board will vote on the final calendar during the regularly scheduled meeting. And again, there'll be an opportunity for public comment. Uh, th this year, our, our calendar process uh, is in a stage where we are uh, taking input from all of our stakeholders, taking input from our school board members, and uh, as also part of the process, we'll be uh, sharing a framework and process to be used in the future as our board considers calendars and calendars uh, for our students. Uh, again, we're very grateful for your input this evening uh, and uh, certainly want you to stay part of this process as we move through uh, through our January 27th uh, uh, school board vote. All right, so as Marty mentioned, the calendar process website has additional information. So if you go to our homepage and scroll down to hot topics, there's a link to calendar development information, or you can search the 2022-23 school year calendar on the FCPS website. We will post a video of this webinar by Wednesday. And a reminder, if you're a parent, staff member, or middle and high school student, please fill out the calendar survey if you have not taken it yet. The survey closes this Wednesday, November 10th. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Have a good evening.